over to uh, Dr. Ophelia. And uh, just so I can uh, share that uh, Dr. Ophelia is a medical doctor from the United States and a board certified doctor there. And we're really happy to be able to have her here with us uh, talking uh, today about intestinal health and friendly bacteria. I'll pass it over to Dr. Ophelia. Thank you. Thank you.
because our bacteria are able to interact with our bodies and other organs like our immune system, endocrine system, and nervous system. So it's an amazing, amazing symbiotic relationship we have. So many of us have pets at home, right? And we give our pets sweet names. Let's just consider our gut flora residential pets. And these are their names. From the kiwis. It's kind of cute. Bacteriorides, Actinobacteria, Proteobacteria, Lactobacillus, Fusobacteria. Can I say those five times, right? We have a nice combination of all. And so we are going to kind of touch on which species of bacteria lead to certain diseases coming out of We're all born with a sterile gut. And during the birthing process, we absorb bacteria from our mothers during um, the canal process and transit. We then further fertilize the bacteria in our gut through our diet. However, we can also feed it or we can also destroy our gut flora through emotional stress. So emotional health is very important in the state of our gut. Intestinal function, peristalsis, um, the transit time, the evacuation time of our stool, all of that affects the concentration and the diversity of the, the flora inside. The big enemies of our intestinal flora are processed foods. They're full of chemicals and pesticides and all sorts of preservatives. I don't want to go into too many details, but all of these have a negative effect. Antibiotics, of course, what do they do? They kill bacteria. Of course, they kill the bad along with the good. So we want to use these judiciously. Emotional health, like I said, is a big uh, component of how our gut um, is actually functioning. Our gut is serotonin. Serotonin is a happy hormone. And so if we are upset, we will reduce our production of serotonin in the gut. And of course, that will decrease our digestion and paracelsis. Lack of exercise also. Studies show that the more we exercise, the more diverse so the key to health is not only how many bacteria we have, but also the diversity. We don't just want one or two strains. We want ten or more. So we want a good number. So here's a little small schematic. On the left side of the screen, you see um, an intestine. It's a carotid depiction, of course. And you see that the cells are very nicely knit together and tight. And what is fertilizing bacteria? Unprocessed food, right? So we have nice, healthy, uninflamed intestinal wall. On the right side, we see some gaps in between our intestines. And these gaps allow these food particles and toxins and you know, things that we don't want to be absorbed to seep, seep back into our bodies. And what's fertilizing? This side. Processed foods, full of preservatives, and carotene. Um, lots of emulsifiers, detergents, uh, artificial colors. All of these are not meant Yeah. 
in our mind. It's not made up. It's actual physiological changes that are occurring. And so if we have depression or if we have anxiety and we're just focusing on an antidepressant pill or anti-anxiety medication, we're really not going to the root of the problem. And I'm not saying that about fluoride is the only problem. In fact, on Sunday, we'll talk a little bit about other factors that are um, kind of um, contributing to this suppression of the But we need to absolutely keep our gut flora in mind in our treatment of depression and anxiety. Remember the 1980s slogan, this is your brain on drugs? Well, this is your brain on junk food. It is clogged up, it's slowed it's slow down, it's suppressed, it's anxious because it's irritable, um, and of course, junk food associated with lack of sleep, high stress, um, social stressors, and all those factors decrease our ability to make good judgments. And making good judgments is so important in our family life, in our social life, and in our jobs. And one of the uh, most important things in succeeding in life is emotional intelligence. And if we can't adapt to other people's responses, if we are unable to adapt to different situations, then we are going to have a little difficult time and we'll be more frustrated. So, gut flora in our large intestine are very important. Remember when we discussed that the small intestines should have very many there is a form of bowel um, disease called small intestinal bowel overgrowth. For short, we call it SIBO. SIBO is uh, a disorder when you actually have an overgrowth of intestines in your small bacteria. So the bacteria that should only be in your large intestine are now in your So 
So although I can't manually go 
and turn on and off my jeans, I can affect what type of floor I have. And in my back, I can improve my health outcome in the future. So just a quick summary of how we can improve our immune system and minimize our risk of infections this fall and flu season. Take a daily probiotic. Try to avoid antibiotics um, as much as possible, and uh, especially when you have viral infections. <coughs> Eliminate processed foods, eliminate refined sugars, of course, eliminate <coughs> excess fats, exercise daily, rest eight hours, seven hours, and help your child in their future health and help them uh, build a strong immune system and a strong health and intestinal health. So as far as our genes, good news, serve our destiny. We need to optimize our flora. It's the best thing that you can do for yourself and for your future health and for your family's health. So be proactive and take probiotics. Thank you.